Hi, it's Dr. Don, giving a little talk about pulmonary arterial hypertension, or PAH. I'm a pulmonary and critical care doctor here in Central Florida, going for a walk in the neighborhood next to a canal that leads to Lake Toho, which is featured in some other videos here. Pulmonary arterial hypertension is a fairly rare condition where there is increased resistance to blood flow through the lung arteries. This leads to shortness of breath and can progress and be fatal sometimes after a few years. It is a commonly misdiagnosis because it requires a heart catheterization to really make the diagnosis. And many people are reluctant to get this testing scheduled. It's one of those diagnoses that if you don't think about it, you'll never make the diagnosis. It's not unusual to have people suffer from this condition for years before they finally meet up with the right doctor that will determine what the real problem is. And this leads to a higher than normal mortality as delay of treatment can lead to irreversible loss of function. So what exactly is it? Well, the left heart has to pump blood from your head to your toe. So it's designed to handle whatever your blood pressure is that you can measure in your arm. The right heart really only has to pump the blood a few inches from the heart to the lungs, which is just a lateral move. So the right heart is really not designed to handle very much of a pressure load. As a result, if anything happens to disrupt that circulation through the lungs, such as blockage from tumor or blockage from blood clots or vasoconstriction from various other conditions, then the right heart can actually fail to have enough energy to pump the blood through. And this can reduce the cardiac output and this leads to shortness of breath, particularly with exertion initially, but later with any sort of activity if it gets bad enough. If it gets really bad, you can have fainting spells or even die from this condition. There's a long list of potential causes, but who do you suspect this in? You basically suspect pulmonary hypertension in people that have shortness of breath out of proportion to other explanations. So obviously someone who has severe asthma or severe COPD or pulmonary fibrosis, you expect a certain amount of shortness of breath. But if this same person has shortness of breath and has a fairly normal x-ray or fairly normal CAT scan and their lung function or lung capacity is pretty normal, then you have to look for cardiovascular causes. Sometimes this can be left heart disease, such as weakness of the heart, which is called cardiomyopathy or from heart attack type issues. It can also come from pulmonary arterial hypertension. We can do a screening echocardiogram that sometimes can show signs of the pulmonary hypertension, but definitive diagnosis requires a right-sided heart catheterization. That's typically done as an outpatient. Ideally, it should be done when the person is not acutely ill and involves passing a catheter through a vein, usually in the arm when we do them, though it can be from a vein in the leg or really any vein that can reach centrally and the catheter is passed into the heart where we measure oxygen levels in the right atrium and in the pulmonary artery as well as the pressures and we can do some fancy calculations and determine the cardiac output and the vascular resistance and we can also tell that if the pressures are increased are they increased due to a problem with the pulmonary vascular resistance or are they increased due to problems with the left side of the heart failing? Again, this is about a 20 minute outpatient procedure generally done under local anesthetic and gives you the answer right away. Did one this morning, in fact, got another one for tomorrow. So it's a fairly common procedure to be done. But you do have to suspect pulmonary hypertension before going there. So once we find out somebody has pulmonary hypertension, we make at least some effort to find out what the cause is. People with autoimmune disease such as lupus, particularly scleroderma or Crest syndrome are at increased risk of developing pulmonary hypertension. And pulmonary hypertension is the leading cause of death in those cases, just scared a bird. That makes up maybe about a third of the cases. I already mentioned blood clots to the lung can cause this just due to physical blockage of the pulmonary circulation, and that's treated with anticoagulation and rare cases surgery for chronic cases. Certain medications, such as diet drugs, that were popular back in the 70s can cause pulmonary arterial hypertension. Any sort of hypoxic condition can lead to pulmonary hypertension, where there are low oxygen levels leading to this. 
Uh, sarcoidosis sometimes is associated with pulmonary hypertension. I'll be doing a talk later about sarcoidosis. And at least a third of the cases are considered idiopathic, meaning there's no good explanation, it just happens, you know, bad luck. Sometimes there are genetic factors, sometimes there's just no explanation. We always make an attempt to look for obvious causes. So most everybody that has pulmonary hypertension diagnosed is gonna have at least some kind of study to look for signs of blood clots since that's so treatable. We'll also draw blood tests to look for signs of the autoimmune diseases and try and treat those as best we can. There are currently around 17 or 18 FDA-approved medications for treatment of pulmonary arterial hypertension, and these can improve exercise capacity, reduce clinical worsening events, and in most cases probably can provide for better quality of life and better length of life. The doctor will decide, based on other conditions the patient may have, which medications are best. We generally, like with all medications, try to find the best mixture of efficacy, which means effectiveness, versus potential side effects or drug interactions with other treatments the patient may already be on. How do we monitor after we started the treatment? In severe cases, we're gonna repeat the right heart catheterization to prove that there's been adequate response to treatment. Because we have so many medications available, we want to make sure we get someone's hemodynamics as normal as we can possibly get them to make sure they have the best chance of having a normal or near normal lifespan. In cases that are more stable and not as severe, we'll do exercise testing, especially something called a six minute walk distance test where we see how far you can walk in six minutes. And this can be measured every few months to judge response of therapy or stability as well as asking the patient about what sort of activities might lead to shortness of breath and compare before and after treatment how that goes. What is the prognosis? It looks terrible if you look it up on the internet. They suggest that it's only a five-year life expectancy. But like a lot of things on the internet, there's a lot of sensationalism. There's certainly very poor prognosis for people whose pulmonary hypertension is discovered at a very late stage, and this unfortunately happens. It's not unusual to find someone who has failed asthma medicines for years only to find out they never had asthma, that the whole time it was pulmonary hypertension that was progressing over time. And because most physicians don't have training and experience in diagnosing and treating pulmonary hypertension, it's not unusual to see patients that had multiple echocardiograms over the years, strongly suspicious for pulmonary hypertension, and yet the patient was never referred for definitive heart catheterization and diagnosis and therefore treatment was delayed for years. And once we start them on treatment, sometimes it's only marginal what we can do for them under those circumstances. So part of the point of the video is to raise awareness of the condition. For people that have shortness of breath without adequate explanation, don't be satisfied with being told it's asthma or something else without having more evidence and at least consider the possibility that it could be pulmonary hypertension. You can look online, the Pulmonary Hypertension Association has lists of physicians that are treating this condition and that have expertise. Most medical schools have at least somebody that's involved in this field of medicine. Feel free to leave comments below if you have questions. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the videos if you found them useful, share with your friends so you can improve the distribution through the YouTube algorithm. And until next time, this is Dr. Don, see you later.